Hey buddy, uh, ooh, my hair's messed up, yeah, I'll fix it later. Uh, today I've got another short one for you, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, this one's called The Traveling Musicians. Uh, an honest farmer had once, once had an ass. That's a donkey, not an ass. Okay, but it's a donkey. But I'm gonna call it an ass just because I don't have to say donkey every time. <laughs> that had been a faithful servant to him in a great many years. But he was now growing old and every day more and more unfit for work. His master, therefore, was tired of keeping him and began to think of putting an end to him. But this ass, who had some mischief from the wind, took himself slyly off and began his journey towards the great city. From here, he thought, I must turn him a musician. After he had traveled a, w a little way, he spied a dog. Do -do 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 -do. I have lost my place lying by the roadside and panting as if he were tired. What makes you pant so, my friend, said the ass. Alas, said the dog, my master is going to knock me on the head because I am old and weak and can no longer make myself useful to him in hunting. So I ran a boy, but what can I do to earn my livelihood? Hark ye, said the ass, I am going to the great city to turn musician. I suppose you go with me and try what you can do in the same way. The dog said he was willing, and they jogged together. They had not gone far before, far before they saw a cat sitting in the middle of the road and making the most rueful face. Pray, good lady, said the ass, what good matter are you? You look quite of spirits. Ah, oh, me, said the cat, how can one be in good spirits when one's life is in danger? Because I am beginning to grow old and had rather lie at my ease in the fire than run about the house after a mile. My, mistry lay, my mistress laid hold of me and was going to drown me and thought I, and though I have been lucky enough to get away from her, I do not know what I am going to live upon. Oh, said the ass, by all means, go with us to the great city. You are a, a good night singer and may make your fortune as a musician. The cat was pleased at the thought in this and joined the party. Soon afterwards, they were passing by a farmyard and they saw a cock perched upon the gate. That's a rooster. And screaming out in the night and the, night, and the main, Bravo! said the ass upon... My word, you'll make a, a famous noise. Pray, what is this about? Why, well, said the cock, I was just now saying we should have fine weather for our washing day, and yet my mistress and the cook didn't thank me for my pains and threatened to cut off my head tomorrow and make broth of me for my guests are coming on Sunday. Heaven forbid, said the ass, may come with us, Master Chantelier? Chanticleer. 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 It will be better at this rate than staying here for your head cut off. Besides, who knows? If we are to sing in tune, we may get up some kind of concert, so come along with us. With all my heart, said the cock, and the four went on jollily together. They could not, however, reach the great city the first day, so they came on and they went to the wood to sleep. And the ass and the dog laid themselves down under a great tree, and the cat climbed under the branches, while the cock, thinking of the higher, he sat at a safer, so he flew up to the very top of the tree. Then, according to his custom, before he went to sleep, he looked out on all sides of him to see if everything was well, and doing this, he saw afar off something bright and shining and calling to his companions, There must be a house a great way off. I see a light. In that case, said the ass, we had better change our quarters, for lodging is the best in the world. Besides, added the dog, I should not be worse for a bone or two or a bit of meat. So they walked off together on the spot where the Chanticleer had seen the light, and they drew near it, became larger and brighter, until they at least came to the house whose where a gang of robbers lived. The ass being the tallest company marched up on the window and peeped in. Well, donkey, said the Chanticleer, what do you see? What do I see, replied the ass, why I see a table spread with all kinds of good things and robbers sitting around it making merry. That would be a, good, a noble lodging for us, said the cock. Yes, said the ass, we, if we could get in. So they consulted together on how they could contrive to get the robbers out, and at last they had a, hit upon a plan. The ass placed himself upright on his hind legs and his four feet resting against the window. The dog got up a look upon his back, and the cat scrambled up the dog's shoulders, and the cock flew up, sat upon the cat's head. When they were all ready, the signal was given to them, and they began their music. The ass brayed, the dog barked, the cat meowed, and the cock screamed. And they all broke through the window at once, and came tumbling in the room amongst the broken glass in the most hideous clatter. The robbers, who had been... Not a little frightened by the opening concert, Hal had no doubt some frightful hobgoblin had broken in upon them, and they scampered away as fast as they could. The coast once clear, the travelers sat down and dispatched what the robbers had left, with as much eagerness as they had not expected to eat again for a month. As soon as they had sac satisfied themselves, they put out the lights, and each one sought out a resting place. The donkey laid himself upon a heap of straw in the yard, the dog stretched himself upon a mat at the door, the cat rolled herself upon the hearth, before the long arm mashes, and the cock perched upon a beam on the top of the house, 
and they were all rather tired with their journey, they soon fell asleep. But at midnight, when the robbers saw from afar the lights were out and that all seemed to be quiet, they began to think that they had been in too great a hurry to turn away. The one of them, who was bolder than the rest, went to see what was going on. Finding everything still, he marched in the kitchen and groped about till he found a match in order to light a candle. Then the espying and the glittering, fiery eyes of the cat, he must have took them for live coals and held the match to them to light it. But the cat, not understanding this joke, sprang at his face and spat and scratched at him. This frightening him dreadfully, and he and away he ran out the back door before the dog jumped up and bit him in the leg. As he was crossing over the yard, the ass kicked him, and the cock who had been awakened by the noise crowed with all his might. At this, the robbers ran back as fast as they could to his comrades and told the captain how horrid, how a horrid witch had gotten into the house, and he and spat at him and scratched his face and her long bony fingers. Now a man with a knife in his hand had hidden himself behind the door and stabbed him in the leg, and how a black monster stood in the yard and struck him with a club, and how a devil had sat upon the top of the house and cried out, Throw the rascal up here. After this, the robbers never go, dared go back to the house, but the musicians were so pleased by their quarters that they took up the abode there, and there they are, I dare say, to this day. Like I said, that was a very short, that was a shorter one, but uh, I hope you liked it just the same. Anyway, I miss you. I'll see you as soon as I can. It looks like it'll be another week or so.